What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Football Guys YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin Coleman. We're back with a little bit of a dynasty edition of the YouTube channel here. Last week, I kind of dived into what it meant to buy players, right? Buying high, buying low, and guys that you could go look at. We gave you five. This week, I'm going to look at sells. So who in the market right now is sell-based, right? So what kind of dynasty assets out there can you sell? Now, like anything, I want to give you guys actionable content, but I also want to talk a little bit about strategy. So first thing about selling, selling high essentially means you're selling on a prospect that you feel like his evaluation is too high. So, you know, there's plenty of guys out there like that right now. Some examples, you know, George Pickens might be valued by your league mates much higher than what he may be. You feel like he should be. And he's a good pivot off right now. Now, I'm not going to include him in this video because everybody's talking about him. But that's kind of what we're looking at with selling high. And, and selling low is more like, hey, you know, you have Cooper Cup on your roster. This might be the last chance to get that last evaluation from them. And you want to try to take as much as you can. And you're willing to give them for like a 107, right? Whereas last year, he was going for a top three pick. And, and so selling low is you want to get that veteran off your roster at the last minute to where you're at least going to get something back, some type of compensation. Think of like Allen Robinson before the big drop. Maybe you got something there. Now, there are always going to be guys on the roster that you might be, if you're a contender, you're willing to let them kind of just, you know, for lack of a better term, die on your roster, right? Like Travis Kelsey for me, on my roster that I have Travis on, I'm probably going to keep him on my roster because his production outweighs the value I can get from him. And he's just going to be a ride in the sunset with me type of guy. Now, ev everything this is, you need to understand where the, your league mates value these guys are at, right? If you're going to try to sell high on a prospect, you need to know whether what league mates might like this prospect. And that comes with where they get their information from. Consensus drives rankings for a lot of people. There's not a lot of people out there that do their own rankings in, in just normal dynasty leagues, right? So if you know that your, your opponent gets a lot of his rankings from Keep Trade Cut, which is a free ranking system, you can use that to your advantage. You'll know, like you'll know some marketing efficiencies of that website. It's free. It does have them. And then you could use that against your league mates. That is a way to kind of manipulate your league mates, right? That's what we're doing here, trying to extract value. If you know that, you know, if you like you, where you're a football guy and you see the rankings and you're like, hey, you know, these guys are ranking this player higher than what I think you know, or excuse me, what, what he's getting valued as, maybe that's a buy opportunity or whatever the case may be. So understand where they're getting their rankings from. If it's just their personal rankings, yeah. But a lot of these guys will take this. If they, if they send you screenshots from certain calculators, that's where they get their rankings from. And then you can go manipulate those, those ranking sites and those calculators to find that value. And that's a good way to kind of do it. Now, let's get into some of the players that I want to talk about. Maybe you should be selling. Now, again, Remember, this is all market-based, so I'm going to give you some options. I'm going to show you some real-life trades. I'm going to show you where they're valued. But again, if you don't agree, if you think they're not getting valued like that, then don't use it, right? That's why I'm giving you four players here that you can look at. First guy is Christian Watson, Green Bay Packers wide receiver. He's pretty highly debated out there in the circles in terms of dynasty. Right now, his dynasty rank here at Football Guys is wide receiver 26, but his dynasty ADP is actually creeping up in the fourth round, wide receiver 19. Now, as far as like possible ceiling that you're looking at, probably wide receiver two, right? In, in terms of that area, if he hits, again, there's some question marks with Christian Watson though. Jordan Love, what is that offense going to look like? Will they be more run heavy? Is he more of just like a, a play, you know, big play threat that, you know, is touchdowns, very touchdown dependent. Is that kind of what we're looking at with Christian Watson? Or is what he was at towards the end of last year is something that we can keep moving forward and he's going to be a solid wide receiver too. I think with where we're at, I would be more comfortable with with his dynasty rank where he's getting drafted at. I think there's there's some work that has to be to kind of get him in that solidified spot of wide receiver 19. Now, and with the market deals that are out there for him, so let's take a look at those. You know what? Christian Watson for DJ Moore in a second. You know, Jeff Bell just wrote a great piece on the site uh, for DJ Moore, a spotlight. I like DJ Moore's upside there. I think DJ Moore actually has wide receiver one upside, like low end wide receiver one upside if he hits. Whereas Watson, you know, they're pretty much even a wash at this point. If you, if you, even if you don't believe in DJ Moore and you get a second with DJ Moore next year's class and go check out our, our mock draft video that we did, uh, the football guys college football show. You can see where those seconds would lie. I, I'm going to side with the DJ Moore on the second side, right? Uh, another one here. So Christian Watson, Paris Campbell, and Tyler Higby. Yeah, Campbell, Higby. What are we doing there? So Watson for Cooper Cup, Aaron Jones, all day. Like, give me that on a contending side. I love Cooper Cup right now going into this. He's a cheat code, you know, you know, especially fantasy points per game. Then you have Aaron Jones, who I think is going to be very big in that offense because I do think they're going to lean on him pretty heavy, to, heavily to – 
counterbalance kind of Jordan Love, make sure that he's comfortable in that. Give me that side all day and a contending side. But even if I'm not contending, that's not a deal that I really want to make on the other side for Christian Watson, right? Now, here's another one. Christian Watts, Watson for Ramondre Stevenson. To me, like, Stevenson's my running back nine in Dynasty. And again, after seven or six, it gets pretty muddled anyway. But for Christian Watson, kind of buying there if you need that running back. And Watson is maybe your wide receiver five or six. And you need that running back help. I wouldn't advocate buying a running back right now. But this is just shows you that market, what you could get for him. Now, my next sell, Tony Pollard. This is just one of those guys that to me, I think he's getting valued right now a little bit too high. I think for this year, if you're a contender and you're like, hey, I believe that he can get over 200 carries, which he's never done before. He's going to be in a shot and offense that's going to definitely lean on the run a little bit. But they brought in Brandon Cooks. They got CD Lamb. They definitely added to their tight end room. They look for that play action deep threat. I think they could be more of a passing attack than we think. Um, and then that offensive line's a little bit banged up, you know, and that offensive line as a Dallas fan, I know this, it, it can be, it can be a struggle for them. And what is that red zone work going to go? Is that red zone touches that went to Zeke going to go to Pollard? Are they going to add someone in that room, which I highly expect them to do so right now? He's running back 15 in our dynasty ranks. He's running back 14 in dynasty ADP. So he's pretty much going pretty close to the same thing and, and possible ceiling. You know, when you're looking at him maybe a low end running back one right like with Pollard like maybe if he can hit that we saw that with those flashes last year so you're there so yeah he could be in that category but there's so many guys that could be that low end running back one for for anybody in this position like Pollard might be a good pivot maybe he's 26 areas right so let's look at these trades now for reference for these trades because I got yelled at on social media about this all of these trades are 12 teams super flex PPR if you've been you know watching me for months and months on this channel and for years on uh, in fantasy you know that i use that so the basic of this unless i say otherwise is 12 team ppr super flex right so here's the, here's the deal tony pollard went for cj stroud if you can get a dynasty quarterback at super flex position for tony pollard you have to do that i think it just it just makes too much sense from a value perspective and just from just just everything perspective there in terms of fantasy, right? Then another one, you have Tony Pollard, Tyler Huntley, and a 24 third for DK Metcalf. So if you want to go get a premier wide receiver who I still believe is a top, you know, 15 wide receiver in that area, you're really giving up Pollard and a third. Huntley to me makes no, you know, no difference there. If you if you believe in DK and you think DK can step up and be that guy in an offense that everybody seems to like Gino. So, you know, why wouldn't you like DK? This is a chance to kind of pivot off of that because Pollard's not going to get you DK probably after this year right? Pollard is a one-year asset that people are believing in. And there's a chance that the Cowboys don't even bring him back after this year, after he plays the tag. So there, there are a lot of question marks there. Then this next one, I really like Tony Pollard in the 110. So if you think about the 110, what it's being right now, you know, you're, you're looking at Zay Flowers, maybe Dalton Kincaid, Zach Charbonnet in that range. Jonathan Mingo, I've seen going there. Um, for Stefan Diggs in the 305, if you need an elite wide receiver for this year and paired to Josh Allen and can go give you, you know, top three numbers and you're looking at 17, 18, 19 fantasy points per game, go get Stefan Diggs right now for Tony Parr. Go pair those things. And, and again, the tiers for the rookies, you're really looking at 106 to 109 and then the tier so you're talking about this is the third tier and tony pollard for an elite dynasty wide receiver who is going to probably net you more points this year than tony pollard right so i would definitely go kind of kick the tires on that if you feel like you're a wide receiver away now this next guy isaiah pacheco i i i you know i didn't necessarily think he was going to be a sell until i started seeing some of the deals that he went through let's talk about what he has so we have him at dynasty rank is running back 31 you know, Dynasty ADP, 10th round running back 29. Low end running back two is probably a ceiling for, for the Chiefs. Really, he's getting drafted because he's the Chiefs starting running back. But they did bring back Derek McKinnon. CH has looked better. That's what they say. And I understand what you're saying right now. We're not going to CH train. I understand it. I get it. But at the same time, like there could be some usage there. The enemy left. So we're not maybe going to see that. So I again, I have a hard time keeping these guys on my roster on de on dynasty teams when we've seen you know day three guys and guys have looked good the previous year not do well the next year right and so when we're looking at trades let's look at this isaiah pacheco for chase claypool for drake london when i saw that thing that went through and i could not believe it and when i posted it on social media people were saying oh that's a great trade for uh for pacheco and claypool if you could go get drake london who's 
dynasty, what, wide receiver 13 right now, I believe, in my rankings. For Pacheco and Claypool, two assets that after this year might not be relevant for London, who look like the alpha in that wide receiver room with Pitts, I'm all day on that. Like, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Isaiah Pacheco for Kenny Pickett. I don't even like Kenny Pickett, but a dynasty quarterback, super flex, who could be a solid quarterback too, with an upside there, I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good deal. If you need a quarterback, that might be an option for you, right? And then here's another one. Isaiah Pacheco, Van Jefferson, David Njoku for Samadre P. Ryan, Javante Williams, and Trey McBride. If you can go get Javante Williams for this price, you have to do that, right? And especially, I love that they added Trey McBride there, who I think has sneaky upside at that tight end position. And he could be the, you know, wide receiver too if DeAndre Hopkins get moved. And he could give that to those targets in the red zone when we're looking at it. Especially with backup quarterbacks, they do like to target their tight end. So if you can go get Javante Williams for this price, you go do it. Isaiah Pacheco looks like he's a smashing sell right now. And I think he's one of the best sells out there. Now, this last guy, I'm going to get some grief for because I'm a DeAndre Swift guy. I believe in his talent. But at some point, I believe his value outweighs what he's done and performed at, right? And I would not be a good analyst to you guys if I just sat there and, and, and didn't show you and explore the marketplaces for a guy like DeAndre Swift. So right now, his dynasty rank is running back 24, which, you know, overall, his football guy is a little lower than some. His But his ADP is sixth round running back 16, right? Now, possible ceiling, running back two. I would comfortably put him there. I'm not putting him in the running back one territory. But again, you know, you're drafting that running back 16, which is probably his possible ceiling, right? Right? Now, here are the deals that we've seen for him. And this is why I think that he could be a kind of a sell. Swift for a 24 first. You were not getting a 24 first for Swift this last year until he got moved to the Eagles. You were barely getting the third. I saw some deals out there that were crazy. So if you, this is your last time to kind of retool, repivot, go get that first and get off of Swift. If you're going to ride with Swift, then you're okay with just riding with him here. But if you want to go get that first, maybe maneuver, get into that top five category, look at Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, that area, this might be the time to do it. Next one, DeAndre Swift, the 112, the 212 for Jameer Gibbs. Now, that's a price. That's a, that's a price. We're not talking about that. But again, if Swift doesn't pan out, if he gets injured again, if we see this, this is a steal for Gibbs, who many have as the running back four in Dynasty, right? 112 and 212. To me, the 212 doesn't necessarily matter. The 112, we know what that is at this point. Zay, these other guys that could be there. Like, what is that moving forward? I don't know. I don't even think it's Zay, really. It could be Kendrick Miller, Zach Charbonnet, Devin Shane. Like, those guys, we don't know. There's a lot of question marks there. For Gibbs, who we know got the draft capital and is going to get the usage. And then DeAndre Swift from Rondre Stevenson. I put Stevenson here a couple of times. I think that's a very, like, who do I think is going to be better and get the targets and the volume? We've seen Ramondre do that, right? We've seen him do that. Swift is not. And I think it's really a question mark there. To me, that's a very good toss up to me. I like Swift probably in that deal a little bit, but I do know there's a lot of people out there that like Ramondre. And if you feel like he's going to have that top five season, like I see some analysts talk about, if you can get him for Swift, I think that's a value, right? So I appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I always am I'm humbled by you guys watching my videos and, and I could not thank you guys enough. Please reach out to me on, on social media, on Twitter. You can follow me at the boys underscore 22. Always send me trade questions. I will always respond when I have time. I'm here to help you guys win your leagues. That's all I care about. So I appreciate you guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. I don't know why you haven't. Um, and be sure to catch us on the College Football Guys uh, YouTube channel and the show. We do a bunch of stuff. We are doing dynasty tiers right now. So we just did quarterbacks. We did um, running backs. We've been doing wide receivers in this next week. And we're combining our tiers, looking at college and NFL guys and trying to help you guys navigate that. So I appreciate you guys. I'll check you guys on the next episode.